couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there Lick and Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome lesson right here on Lick and Riff. In this video, I'm gonna teach you finger style chord shapes. What do I mean by finger style chord shapes? I mean that in finger style, because you choose the strings you're playing, you don't really have to play the whole chord all the time. The simplest example I can give is E minor. Most of the time in finger style, you don't have to play this E minor, you can play this E minor, strings one, two, three, and six. And if we're on E minor, because we have the open 6th string, we can use all of the shapes of E minor throughout the neck. We can play 12, 12, and 12, which is an octave above the open 1st, 2nd, and 3rd strings. We can use 7, 8, and 9, okay, on strings 1, 2, and 3, and we can use the D minor shape on 3, 3, 5, 4. Okay, so for E minor, we have everything but this. Okay, we can use this, of course, but most of the time, as I told you, we're playing the open strings, strings 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now, the same goes for G. You don't have to put this whole contraption on. You can just place uh, the finger on the 6th string, on 3, and play strings 2, 3, 4, and 6. And better yet, you can use the thumb for that. And you have your fingers free for soloing and actually this is kind of the beginner G chord in finger style there's another one which is this okay this is based on the barred chord it's this it's three four and five on strings two three and four with your thumb on the sixth string okay? this allows for the pinky be free for soloing and also for other notes but this might not be the best example for this the better example would be for G sharp okay 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 where you use this same shape and you use the pinky to solo Okay, but let's go back to G because there's a really, really interesting G chord I want to show you first, which is kind of a soloing G chord. Use your second and third fingers for three and three on strings two and six. Okay, this. To leave your first and fourth fingers, the forefinger and the pinky, the little finger free, for soloing on two and four on strings three and four. you can solo with this but if you have four on the uh, third string and the open second string it's the same note but if you have three on the second string you get finger style okay you start to get that wholesome sound now, uh, the widespread sound, I mean, not wholesome sound. This is also a wholesome sound. Um, yeah, definitions in music. Let's not get into that. Now, um, for A minor, for example, you have the open A string and you have five, five, and five on strings one, two, and three. Of course, you also have uh, a major with six on the third string, five, five, and six. And you can also do this. Five, six, and seven on strings two, three, and four with the open fifth string. And again, it's the same thing as this shape, only with the open A bass. You can put the thumb on the, the sixth string on five, but why? You have the open fifth string. And um, again, this enables you to solo and you can slide the whole chord. playing lounge music um, or not you can re do really cool stuff with that I just didn't have a really good example in mind um, but again you can do 
you can solo over it and finish on the chord. Okay? Something like this. And another really cool um, chord is the C7 shape. You can actually drag that all the way across the neck. But for example, on D, it sounds really, really good. Um, C7 up two frets and you have the open E string and that turns it into D9 immediately. can solo over it with one or two fingers, just let go of them and then bring them back into the chord. Um, this is not a lesson for examples, musical examples, I'm just showing you the shapes. Now you have the minor 7 shape like this, which is one of the most beautiful chord shapes, because this is a minor chord and this is the minor note, but this is barred. So um, you can use this. This is a terrific chord, okay? Bar anywhere you want and the pinky on three frets upward on the second string. For example, in B minor, it's seven and 10 on the second string. And you can play strings two, three, four, and six. That way you have the seventh here as well. But this is why we need this shape. Because if we play this, we don't have this sound in there, and if we have this, then we have both of them. We have both of these notes inside the same chord. So it's the first finger anywhere on the uh, E string, and the rest of the fingers two frets upward on strings two, three, and six. This is B minor, so it's five and sevens. And for G minor, 7, actually, G minor 7, I forgot the 7, sorry, it would be 1 and 3s, and for A minor 7, it would be 3 and 5s, or with the open A string, you can do it like this, okay, and then you have the pinky free for soloing, and um, I'm pretty sure that I'm forgetting one shape, well, of course, the seventh chord. Um, instead of doing this, most of the time you won't be playing the fourth string. So just take the finger off and you have this. A bar with the pinky or the third finger, uh, two frets up on the second string and play strings one, two, three, and five. Or strings two, three, and five. And you get the seventh chord have the rest of the chord, the rest of the fingers for soloing. Okay? And no hassle. The same actually goes for a major chord. Instead of doing this, you can just do this. Okay? And since we're not playing this, the, the D string, we're playing strings 1, 2, 3, and 5, we don't need to put anything on the D string. And this is way more comfortable than this. The notoriously uncomfortable chord shape. Okay, so this turns it into a more comfortable and manageable shape, especially in B flat, okay, where you have to stretch your fingers there. So this is a lot easier. And then you can go to G minor 7 and uh, create finger style magic and uh, finish on D minor. This is stolen from uh, Caprice or Capriccio number four uh, in D minor by Carcassi. I have a lesson for that, a very old lesson on this channel, but uh, it's worth learning. It's a really, really cool piece, but enough digression. Okay, and um, there's also another shape with D. You have the open D string and you have D over here. So you can either do this, 5, 7, 7 on strings 1, 2, and 3, because it's this, and we have the open D bass string, the fourth. And the same goes for D minor, which is okay, 5, 6, and 7, instead of 5, 7, and 7. 
and it's the same shape as the A minor and A, but on 10 with D. Okay, this is D minor, 10, 10, and 10, and 10, 10, and 11 are D major. Okay? But there's also another one. You can bar the seventh fret up to the third string and play the D string with it with 10 on the E string. This is also D because it's the D, the, the G shape D. Okay, the G chord shape. Okay, so there's this. You can also play the A string there and create D over A, which is a floor chord. Okay, so um, all right, I'll leave you with those uh, chord shapes to practice on, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.